as a property for the establishment of a pet crematorium. The plan is subject to requirements in section 903.29 of the zoning ordinance, which also reference requirements in section 1001 performance standards. The plan was reviewed for compliance to borough standards and approved by the Planning Commission for the Consideration Council. The Planning Commission's recommendation of approval of the plan by Council includes a contingency of landscaping upgrades and lighting upgrades to Gooseneck in order to create a cohesive facade with the, uh, with the current business in the area. Uh, little notation on the COVID-19 public participation notice. Uh, due to the current need for social distancing, public participation shall be by telephone and or video conference only. For information regarding how to attend and participate in this public hearing, that has been duly uh, advertised. Uh, I would ask under citizens, citizens' comments that are being made if you could identify yourself before you speak. Do we have any citizen comments uh, to note? All right, and it's the property owner. Hi. Hi, could you state your name, please? Do we have any citizen comments to be made? Uh, yes, Pat de Blasio here. And if I might, I beg your pardon, I don't mean to cut anybody off. Uh, Mr. Henderson, if we might, uh, if the public comments are germane to the application, um, I would suggest we proceed in an order where those are reserved till after I make my introductory comments, the applicant makes their presentation, uh, the engineers make their presentation, and then I do believe there's a gentleman specific. Uh, Mr. Rattini, who wishes to make perhaps comment, and then certainly others as well are welcome at that point. That that would be my suggestion. Uh, Tom, could you um, then solicit the, the comments that you're looking to in the order in which you would like them? Yeah, if I might. Um, with, with your permission, might I um, um, uh, assist and act uh, as the sub chairperson uh, momentarily? Daddy and Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you, Mr. Henderson, for the for the summary of why we're here. And 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 if you'll bear with me, um, just as a matter of the record, we do have a stenographer who is uh, uh, is taking everything down here. And because it's a public hearing, I do need to read a list of uh, exhibits into the record um, regarding our publication, people publication, and a, a number of the things that Mr. Henderson uh, touched base on. Uh, this application was actually filed, and it'll be one of the exhibits in February of 2019, along with a companion site plan land development application. That site plan slash land development application has been approved, and I will place that into the record. The reason, and just by way of summary, that we are kind of redoing the conditional use, the zoning hearing is because we did have a defect in posting it uh, when we did the original hearing last year in February of 2019. So in order to cure that defect and to allow any comments that the public wishes to make regarding that conditional use zoning approval, separate and apart from the land development approval, we have reconvened and republished um, this hearing. I have, uh, before us tonight, however, is not the topic of any defects in the prior proceedings. Those are uh, pending uh, before the zoning hearing board. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Rattini has submitted an objection dated October, uh, April 13, 2020, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 2000, April 9, 2020, regarding uh, uh, the manner of and the circumstances of conducting the hearing tonight under the COVID circumstances, et cetera. I have spoken with Mr. Rattini regarding that and I assured him and I am now uh, placing in the record his objection in that regard and reserving any objections that he or anybody else has to the manner of conducting this meeting and reserving their rights on that. So we don't need to further review that issue and can stick to the actual application um, issue tonight. 
Although the site plan was previously approved, um, we do have our engineers, um, Lennon Smith and Kevin Brett available to touch upon uh, for folks in general information and because some questions have been raised on the issue of compliance with uh, parking requirements with regard to number of parking and the design of the parking. Um, uh, having said that, um, and touching upon Mr. Henderson's review of, of the conditional use application, I kind of just want to supplement that for folks in this regard. A conditional use is a, it's, it's kind of a permitted use under the law with the exception that you have to meet certain extra specific criteria, objective criteria, and there's the actual extra um, procedural uh, 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 mechanism of going through the planning commission and having a public hearing. Under the law, if one meets all of the specific criteria for a use, we are legally obligated to approve that with reasonable conditions. Um, and we're not allowed to deny it if they meet the objective criteria uh, under the ground of general health, safety, and welfare concerns, such as traffic or other uh, health concerns, et cetera, unless those extraordinarily or st and substantially outweigh the fact that you're allowed to do this activity with those criteria met in this location, which our zoning ordinance does provide for a crematorium to be located subject to these approval criteria in the mixed use district. The three specific criteria are that the pet crematorium is subject to compliance with our general performance standards uh, set forth in section 101 of the ordinance. Um, they must comply with general commonwealth laws and regulations regarding that use. And they also have to conform to the air quality regulations of the Allegheny County Health Department. And we will be looking to the applicant to submit uh, support in regard to those um, criteria. If I might, before I turn it over to the applicant to make their um, submission, uh, followed by uh, uh, Lennon Smith touching upon the parking concerns that were raised and other comments that they may wish to make, and then to uh, Mr. Rattini and any other members of public, and certainly at any time for council question. Allow me please to conclude by reading into the record, and I will forward to the stenographer the list of borough exhibits that we would like to have placed in the record in the event that the stenographic record is created. And those are as follows. Borough exhibit A would be the application for conditional use and site plan approval with the attached plan that was um, dated February 14th, 2019. Exhibit B would be the Post-Gazette legal notice for the hearing held today uh, that was published in the Post-Gazette on March 19th and March 26th uh, with proof of publication thereof. Uh, exhibit C would be the posted notice, which did actually include a COVID notice, which the township manager posted at least a week before the hearing at, at the property location. Exhibit D is a COVID-19 notice that the borough provided to the Post-Gazette and which published on Friday, um, April 10, 2020, regarding our general procedures that we're invoking here to have our meetings during this time, generally and specifically with regard to this public hearing. Um, exhibit E is a web page notice um, uh, of the COVID-19 and public hearing notice that were published on our borough website on Thursday, April 9, 2020. Uh, by way of note, I will note that the manager and assistant manager caused those also to be sent out by Facebook on Thursday and uh, a text blast was also sent out on Friday, April 10th. Uh, exhibit F is an email notice provided by myself to Mr. Rattini dated April 3rd, 2020 of the occurrence of this hearing tonight with the COVID-19 procedures. Exhibit G are the planning commission minutes dated April 29, 2020, at which time the companion site plan was reviewed and tabled. Um, exhibit I, uh, H 
is the planning commission minutes dated May 2020, at which time the planning commission recommended site plan approval uh, subject to uh, the borough's uh, engineer's comment letters. Uh, exhibit I are the council meeting minutes from June 2020 uh, approving the companion site plan also subject to conditions. Exhibit J are the three review letters uh, completed by Lennon Smith with regard to the companion site plan dated April 25th, May 20th, and June 5th, 2019, respectively. Uh, Exhibit K would be a letter submitted by Mr. John Rattini, uh, uh, dated slash received April 9, 2020, objecting to the occurrence of the hearing tonight under the current virtual meeting circumstances and raising related Sunshine Act matters, uh, which as I indicated before, we acknowledge, accept and reserve to him all rights attendant thereto. And finally, I would submit uh, a, uh, a a, a document called Rattini Submissions, uh, Parking Concerns Number One, Parking Concerns Number Two, and Parking Concerns Number Three, dated April 13, 2020. Um, if, if with those exhibits accepted in, uh, into the record, I will uh, conclude and would invite without objection the applicant or their representative uh, to make such submission as they wish regarding this application. Good evening, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, all right, thank you. Um, uh, thank you for uh, allowing us to speak today. My name is Krista Kachowski, I'm with the Lynch Law Group and I'm here today as counsel for uh, Tamara Padulek uh, and uh, Pittsburgh Pet at Home LLC, of which she is the sole member. Uh, I would just first, I think I mentioned to Tom maybe earlier uh, than this, that we do want to place um, somewhat of an objection on the record this evening, just to reserve our rights um, to the extent that this hearing is going to be interpreted as a brand new hearing on whether the subject property qualifies for a conditional use uh, as a pet crematorium. It's the position of uh, my office and my client that the existing decision and the conditional use granted uh, remains in effect, absent a successful appeal by an objector to the Court of Common Pleas, which would be the proper jurisdiction if any appeal was uh, intended to be uh, made. So with that, reserving that uh, position, if I could on the record, and then moving forward, I would just ask that the board I guess, have into evidence all of the information that was provided by Mr. Bean in the course of presentment of the original application for conditional use. Um, that would include the application for conditional use submitted on January 18, 2019. That would include the report of uh, gateway engineers engaged by the township dated January 25, 2019, uh, pursuant to which the engineers concluded that all of the standards required for the grant of the conditional use were met. And those are all the standards identified in section 903.29A, including the performance standards um, identified as 1000.1 through 1000.11. And then also the actual decision of the planning commission to recommend to the council that the application be granted uh, with some conditions, including landscape improvements in gooseneck lighting. And then finally, the actual decision of the council to grant the conditional use, again, with the contingencies outlined by the, the planning commission, which were those outlined by the engineer speaking to lighting and landscaping. Without objection, those will be accepted into the record and the solicitor will also note our acknowledgement that this is not a new application and this is a uh, rehearing of the original application as originally filed in February, 2020. Thank you. Mr. 
Would you like to oh. proceed? Yeah. Does, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Krista, do you have other presentation regarding the application? Uh, I, I mean, it's our position that the application was already granted and still remains in effect. So I think that the information, the evidence submitted at the time of the original he hearing, um, as long as that's deemed to be on the record uh, this evening, is sufficient to uh, enable that land use decision to be uh, upheld in any situation. Uh, I think the only, I guess, maybe additional information I would highlight, because I do think it was referenced and incorporated into the Gateway Engineering Report, which I did just mention before as part of our evidence tonight, would be the fact that, um, that my client did in fact have the Allegheny County Health Department uh, approve the operations of the intended operations as a pet crematorium and those were submitted and acknowledged by gateway engineers at the time of the initial hearing thank you and, I, and if you could just for council's edification and folks edification that includes a, the uh, a certification regarding the emissions is that correct uh yes it is it is it is correct and it's actually also um i think probably was raised and pertinent to the underlying application because of uh, the requirement to conform with 903.29C, which states that the you shall conform to the air quality regulations of the county health department. And so that uh, permit was submitted as evidence of compliance with that, with that standard. Thank you. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to share that with the public no, thank you. council. And would that conclude your presentation? It, it does. I mean, I, I would like to um, respond to any attempt to do you miss an appeal of that decision if, so, if, if that position is raised by one of the um, uh, residents or any objector? But I'll, I'll hold back those, those comments unless because they may not be necessary. Certainly, and we certainly want everybody to reserve whatever rights they wish they need, feel they need to reserve on the record at this time. Um, um, Attorney McDermott, would you, do you need, my client's here with me, do you, does the, um, the council need her to just state that she, uh, acknowledges everything that I've said and accepts it or? No, ma'am, you can speak on her behalf. Okay, thank you. Um, it might be germane at, at this time uh, or worthwhile, I guess, at this time uh, to note a, a couple of things. Um, there, w one concern that was raised and, and I'll allow Lennon Smith to speak to the specific parking matter in a, in a moment was, um, even accepting the manner in which the calculation is done for parking, what if kind of thing, if um, say for example, the third floor were to be occupied by either the present applicant um, in three regards. One, as kind of an accessory administrative office to this business, two, as a separate say veterinary or other business, or three, rent it out to a third party for occupation. Um, it goes without saying, and I, under, I believe the applicant understands and appreciates as well, and it's been explained to the public, um, to the extent that the applicant wishes to use the entire building for this use, she may do so, and the parking calculations are based on the public space. Uh, for example, an administrative managerial office where she did billing or whatnot in the attic space or whatever is a subordinate accessory use to this business and does not require separate occupancy, nor does this need to be acquired, accounted for otherwise in the parking calculations. Um, however, uh, by way of um, just a be advised kind of notice, um, we can make note in our decision of the fact and make note of it in this public hearing that everybody is aware that to the extent of, that there was a separate occupancy or use that would be subject to new application, occupancy permits and separate uh, parking requirements. Um, and, and I just wanted to make a note of that. Um, Lennon Smith for, even though parking is not directly before us, I've asked him in summary to review and just speak in summary fashion to compliance with uh, the parking criteria as it pertains to ordinance requirements on how you calculate it for this use and its design, if you might. Yes, good evening everybody. Uh, this is Kevin Brett from Lennon Smith Soul Ray. Um, as Tom indicated, um, uh, we did uh, receive and review site plans. We had uh, the letters, as Tom indicated, 
um, that were issued, uh, the final plans. Um, they did meet the requirements um, for parking. Um, they did meet the requirements uh, that were conditioned lighting and landscaping. And as Tom indicated, there is specific criteria for um, what's required uh, for the uh, subject use uh, pet crematorium. It's one space uh, for each 250 uh, square foot of de devoted customer service and retail sales. Um, the applicant has submitted documentation and their plan as submitted um, does comply uh, with the ordinances. Uh, the, uh, as indicated by the applicant, um, their conditional use was um, submitted and reviewed by the previous engineer, Gateway Engineers, and um, that letter stands um, as far as the conditional use criteria. Tom did forward over three concerns on uh, parking concerns, uh, one, two, and three. I did take an opportunity to review those. Um, those items were, are, are noted um, that the comments have been received, but uh, as far as the plan goes and our review of the concerns versus what the plan that was submitted, um, the plan as submitted still meets the ordinance and uh, our opinion remains unchanged. So I can take any questions uh, beyond that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it would be appropriate at this time if you wish to, uh, if any of council members certainly had any questions of anybody or if members, uh, if Mr. Rattini or any other member of the public wishes to make comment at this time. I, I would first uh, invite Mr. Rattini if you had any comments to add. Yeah, you were you were on mute. If you're trying to speak, Mr. Rotini, you were on mute. Okay, he is on. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you now. Yeah. In the um, zoning ordinance, there's a particular um, provision which requires that no vehicle exiting the parking space should require a vehicle on the street to queue for that vehicle. They use that specific language. Given the fact that the parking, the garage and the garage door is literally five feet off of the road surface and the road is a very narrow road, it's a non-complying road, it's only 19 feet as opposed to the required 24 feet, it would be impossible to exit the garage without in, in requiring an on-road vehicle, on-street vehicle to have to address that, that vehicle that's attempting to exit the garage. So my question is, is what does the term Q mean in the zoning ordinance with regards to vehicles exiting the parking spaces? I'm happy to address that in the first instance. And as I said, that's a matter of the site plan approval, not the land, uh, not the conditional use approval as a procedural matter. As a substantive matter, those rules speak to when one is designing a street versus the existing conditions with which were presented. With that existing condition in place, the engineers review it on an existing condition basis, uh, subject to the specific criteria in the ordinance, and they comply with the uh, those in terms of the locations of their parking spaces and their parking numbers. I don't know if Kevin might have anything to add to that. That is true, true. And I mean, I, I think this falls to, as Tom said, this, you're talking about the design of the street versus uh, somebody uh, coming out of a fixed structure onto the street. Um, if the literal interpretation was taken into account, then every street um, that somebody would have a garage that comes out onto the street in order for somebody to back out from an, a structure onto the street, obviously a car has to, if one's coming, has to stop in order to pull out onto the street. Um, so I believe the, the intent of the ordinance is, or how it's interpreted, is uh, for a new street, not for an existing condition. 
And that's the way those are commonly interpreted and applied in the context of these sorts of applications in terms of existing conditions that you found here and elsewhere where you deal with such matters, Mr. Brett? Yes. Thank you. Does Mr. Rattini have any further comment? Should we open it up for public comment, Tom? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Are there any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? I did, I did, I thought I heard Mr. de Blasio uh, attempt to comment generally at the uh, beginning and lest we uh, uh, missed that, I guess one shout out to him if he still wished to comment on this application. Tom, I think he is, has hung up from okay. the meeting. Okay, at that, at this time then I'll take a motion for an adjournment. I have a question. Is oh. Go ahead, who was it? My name's Kelly. This is the council meeting about the crem the crematory down at the bottom of the hill, correct? Public hearing, yes, ma'am. And if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Your my name's name. Kelly. My name's Kelly Cooper, and my address is thirteen eleven Missouri Avenue, Bridgeville one five zero one seven. Thank you. So, I just have a question with all of the. Um, it's my understanding that a couple of these different, there was a couple different locations that denied application for this. Am I wrong about that? Like a couple I, different. I, I, have, I have no, if you're, are you talking about when you say other locations, other municipalities? Correct, yes. That may or may not be the case. That's not relevant. Every uh, township and borough has its own zoning ordinance and land development ordinance and its own criteria. So that would be apples and orange. The only thing that we're allowed to judge an application against is our own Bridgeville ordinance criteria. Okay. Also about the parking that we're able to, where is all the parking going to come from with this building? Just for your information on the site plan that uh, has been testified meets uh, uh, our specifications. The only the parking uh, that they are required to provide is uh, sufficient for their um, sh place where the, they would have a customer or a patron come and visit them in a public space. This location has approximately 700 square feet of that and that yields uh, a minimum of three parking spaces required. My understanding is the site plan shows that they have those spaces outside and in addition to that, they have one internal space that they anticipate using for their own use. Is that a, a fair summary of the parking, Kevin? Yes, yes it is, Tom. And does that address your question, ma'am? For that, yes. Also, with, with living here and having small children and living above this and having the winds come this direction from there with everything that is has has any of this been tested by the EPA I'll, I can respond to that if the applicant's representative wishes to add anything to that um, the it is uh, it, it may well be through EPA laws <laughs> and through state laws and regulation that distill their way down to the county but the county is the primarily the local um, regulatory agency that uh, approves such matters. And it has been placed into the record that they have obtained all their necessary state and county approvals, including uh, their certification that is based on the compliance with air emissions. Okay, and how safe is this then? It's compliant with the regulations. Um, and presumptively meets that criteria. The applicant may, if she wishes, speak to, uh, if she wishes the uh, nature of this um, crematorium and how it operates, if, if she wishes. Uh, Attorney McDermott, 
uh, my client, Ms. Padgelak, uh, is willing to offer a few comments um, to answer that inquiry. But prior to her doing that, again, I just want to reiterate that it's our position that the uh, conditional land use was granted on February 14, 2019. So therefore, to the extent that any objector wanted to appeal that decision, it should have been done to the Court of Common Pleas by March 16, 2019. We, but we will that, accept that as a continuing objection. Yes, and right, because we had no, we did not know about this. We That's really didn't know about that as homeowners, that this was going in. And I also find it odd that we're having this meeting held during a pandemic where we're not all able to be there in person. Your objection in that regard is, is noted. Okay, so, Ms. Padula. I can't hear you. The crematory itself, the furnace itself has absolutely no smoke or any type of emissions. The only thing that comes out of there is hot air. The permit that I had to obtain from Allegheny County took a year to get, and it's very strict as far as EPA and guidelines and pollutants and things like that. There, there are none, or they're very minimal, not any worse than a furnace in a house because obviously we don't want to hurt the public. And I also want to say, there's a crematorium up, you know, a mile up the street. And those, there are apartments right next to those, to that crematory as well that have never complained as far as I know to the borough about any problems mm -hmm. with that crematory either. Ma'am, uh, the crematorium you're referring to up the street, you're referring to within the business district of the borough of Bridgeville itself? That's correct, Chartier's cremation. Okay. Can we have the manager and zoning officer speak to whether or not we have ever received any complaints regarding that uh, existing facility? I have never experienced or received any complaint regarding that facility since it's been in existence, which, which is quite a few years now. Thank you. Uh, does Kelly or anybody else have any other comments at this time? Uh, I beg Pat DeBlazio has, sure. De has been trying to get in. Uh, is he unmuted at this point? Yes. Pat, I'm here. Pat. Hello. Floor is yours. So yes, I am here, um, and yes, I did have a couple of comments. Uh, first, uh, as was being said, I don't, I don't see this being an issue of pollution or of air quality. I certainly see the issue of parking. Uh, again, you know, I, I don't see the issue of parking um, so much from the applicant standpoint. Um, I understand how he is trying to, or she is trying to, uh, you know, comply with the borough's regulations. Uh, I'm speaking more broadly, and Mr. Henderson and the rest of council is aware of the the uh, difficulties at the north end of Washington Avenue in Bridgeville Borough. The lack of parking there has constrained development and made a very difficult uh, situation for the residents of St. Clair Street, the residents of Presley, the owners of the property um, on Washington Avenue, including the current applicant and I my comment is that the borough of Bridgeville as a borough should solve the public problem it needs Mr. to be solved and, and, and by the way I take hold on a second I take yeah. my share of the blame in not getting the problem solved so I'm I'm not trying to pass this I'm simply bringing it up that we have a parking problem and it needs to be solved. Go ahead. Thank you. And I didn't mean to cut you off, Pat. I apologize. I, I just wanted to ask you and have you acknowledge or agree or disagree with the concept that that general policy uh, parking uh, concern is uh, separate and apart from this application. Um, is it or is it not? You're not suggesting, are you, that this particular application can be denied or decided upon one way or the other based on that generalized parking concern in the neighborhood? 
No, I I I find, and I, I I back back in 2019 when this application was originally brought forth, um, I saw how the uh, the mathematics were being done. I see Mr. Ritteni's, uh issue uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with the possible. Um, um, additional burdens if the use were to change and I see your answer. In, in in quick answer, no, I do not see it as one way or another for this applicant. I bring my comments to the floor because it's a problem that needs solved by the borough. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page as far as what you're explaining. We are. It is not okay. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from citizens? With no further comments, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Joe Colosimo. Joe Colosimo, motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Is it Joe Verducci? I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion to adjourn. Are we staying on this meeting right here?